Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Enjoying Retirement. We just got back from a uh, wonderful trip that included a charter fishing trip with Miller's Landing out of Seward, Alaska. It's our first time trip, bucket list, and we had some questions that we didn't have all the answers to, and I thought uh, if you're lucky enough to be making your uh, bucket list trip up there, you might like to think about these and ask them and get some of our answers. My wife's first question is, is there a bathroom on the boat? And then, of course, when should I go? What do I wear? What license do I get? How do I get the fish home? And many more. We're going to cover all those as we go through this video uh, showing our 11-hour trip. I'm going to show you most of the fish we caught, and uh, I'm also going to put a time uh, marker down so you can kind of see how our day progressed. Here's Miller's Landing. It's a little bit outside of Seward, Alaska, and uh, just a, a beautiful area, as you would imagine. That's our boat right there. There's going to be six of us on it, uh, three couples. As you can see, there's a little uh, cabin right there. It does not hold all six of us, but uh, it, it'll take four or five comfortably. Uh, everybody else better be ready to be outside. So let's get into it. Question number one is probably, when should I go? Which is related to question number two, what fish do you want to catch? Um, because you're going to find out you need to look at the various charters even if it's the same time of uh, year you'll find that some charters may offer multi-species fishing while others just concentrate on halibut and will attempt to pick up some cod and rockfish as well so uh, early june is a good time to go that's when we went there's no mosquitoes yet and we went on a halibut trip that promised a little cod and rockfish action uh, we also got a king salmon permit just in case because our neighbor where we stayed uh, His boat had picked up about a dozen king salmon the day before he went with the J doc uh, Crew we went with Miller's Landing. Uh, we did not target um, Salmon, but if you book with someone else you might so go to the charter look up there and see what's available in the time you're going and if you have the luxury of picking the time uh, base it upon the type of fish you want and then book your charter accordingly but go by the uh, various charters in the area you're looking for that was a stella sea lion colony we just saw there stop there on no name island as we went out on our boat another question is do i need a fishing license how much and how do i get it the answer is yes, you do. If you're used to fishing uh, on a charter in Florida, um, oftentimes a license is included in the charter. Up in Alaska, that's not always the case. So make sure you check with the boat, but chances are you're gonna have to buy the license on your own. Don't worry, it's fairly simple. Uh, you go to the Alaska Game and Fish website, buy license, and you can buy a one-day non-resident license for $15. And if you're going to be there and have a chance to get King Salmon, don't forget to get the salmon tag, and that's an extra $15. And you can also choose which date you're going months ahead of time and buy the license ahead of time for the specific date of your charter. All right, let's get on with some fishing. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time watching the tip of your fishing pole. Once it's down there, you're gonna reel it back a few feet off the bottom, wait for the bite and uh, watch that pole. And when it bends, start reeling. Here's the first catch of the boat. It was a little flounder, it went back. You're gonna find out we had a lot of flounder uh, on this trip and they all went back. For some reason, they said the flounder don't taste good up there. So here's mine and it's gonna go flounder. back. Okay, that's the trap We're going to have a lot of flounder and a lot of sharks on this trip, as you will see, and they're all going to go back. Now, my wife's favorite question, or first question is, is there a bathroom? Well, we were told there was a toilet. Uh, I assumed that meant that there was a bathroom. Well, there's the bathroom. Uh, it's on the back of the ship. What it lacks in privacy, it makes up with a heck of a view. So you may want to ask a little bit more about that in case you're traveling with someone who, you know, has a shy bladder. Well, back to fishing. Now it looks like my wife's turn is up and she is going to get her first halibut. Oh, that's a beauty. That's a little small, so it's going to go back. All right, the mate is going to bait up the hook again and we're going to toss it over. 
I'm watching my tip again and it bent over and I'm bringing up and I'm going to get my first cod of the day. Uh, got one of them and gonna end up with three fish rockfish up. in addition to the halibut you'll see later. And I gotta tell you, all of them are delicious. I don't know which one I would say is better than the other. So if you're fishing, do not be disappointed if you reel in the cod Good or rockfish before you get your halibut. In fact, reel in as many of those cod as you can. They are wonderful eating. All right, back to fishing. And there is the guy at the end again with the first shark of the day. We're gonna find out that those shark are kind of plaguing us at this spot. And after everybody catches a few, my wife in particular, we're gonna move on. As for me, it's time for that pole to be moving and it looks like I'm going to reel in my next fish. Let's see what it is. The good news is is that it's a halibut. Bad news is it's just a baby. So where we are in Alaska you can keep two fish. One of them has no size limit but the second one has to be under 28 inches. So ideally you catch a giant and one that's 27 and three quarter inches long. Now pay attention, if you go to other parts of Alaska, they're gonna have a, uh, they may have a slightly different uh, rule. You may only be allowed to have one fish. So that's gonna change on a yearly basis, so uh, make sure you check on where you're going. Shark. And there's my wife pulling up her first shark. Well, maybe her third shark. After a while, I stopped filming all of them. They call this a dogfish. I, I know up uh, in Maine area, uh, they eat dogfish. So I'm not sure if that's the same dogfish shark as these guys or not, but uh, they all went back here. Nope. All right, I'm pulling up my next fish. And, yep, it's a flounder. So back it goes. All right, back to fishing. My wife's on again. But it's going to be another shark. Oh, yes, it looks like another oh, shark. Another shark. Oh, That's okay. She was on a roll today. She's got another fish. Okay, that's too And this one's a halibut, just a baby one. Doggone it. She's on again. Another and baby. It's another halibut. Again, a small one. All right, my turn. I'm ready to catch something. Well, my turn. Well, it's a shark. So back he goes. We were all having problems uh, catching shark here, so uh, eventually we moved on. Wife's on again, and what is she going to get? Yep. Well, she's going to get tangled that's up. That's a good me. one. That's one thing. But she has a beautiful looking cod right there. And that's our first rockfish. And as I said before, they are wonderful tasting. I think my wife actually prefers the rockfish to the halibut and the cod. Um, as for me, I will take any of them. Cod is unlimited up there, so you can catch as many as the uh, boat will take on. Bring it in. And I would not have minded doing that. I mentioned the guy, uh, my neighbor, before where we stayed. His boat caught over 100 cod the day before, but he went with J-Doc. And they were targeting various things. Okay, now we're going to let this one play. My wife uh, is on the hook again. And this time it is a noticeably large fish. Captain is clearing the deck on this side of everybody else's line to avoid fouling. And uh, they really get into action when they've got a big halibut on tap. So let's listen in. The harpoon tip is on the rail. It looks like the harpoon tip. Keep going, you got it. Keep going. Keep going. Here's a big one. This is the freezer filler. Good job. Good job. Keep going, keep on. Worry about the fish, not what he's doing. Oh, man. He is 
Pulling his car. Forward, okay? I got it. Are right, you gonna walk with me? Go with him. Okay, slow and steady here, okay? Keep going. 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 Show Maybe there's two down there. I don't know, but that was a, that was a big fish. <laughs> you want a big fish or not? Yes. Keep going. Okay. Sometimes I'll take the gap. I'll tell you. I'll instruct you to just cook the line, not the leader. Make sure you never touch the, the gap hook to the leader. Here he is. He's coming up. Oh my gosh! That is a fish. All right. Now hook. Just hold him, Mason. Don't pull. Don't pull. Good job. Okay. Okay. We're gonna do some pro status here. I guess you have to keep it now. Yeah, I have to kill it now. Let me know if you Oh my god, oh my heart is racing so fast. Hello, hello, brother. Yeah, it looks good. Oh. Yeah. Shark man, sharks again. Good job. You're my hero. You did so good. <laughs> Faith in you. Ah. <laughs> when he said, oh, throw that one back, I'm like, what if I can't catch anything like that again? And he said, yep, yeah, throw. That's right. Ah! It bites me! Yeah, he'll bite you. <laughs> He's heavy. Yes, I was, I was fooling. How about like this? <laughs> all right, smile. All right, thank you guys. So that halibut ended up being the big fish of the boat. Uh, measured about 60 inches and estimated to be between 70 and 80 pounds. So good for my wife. Uh, here she's pulling up another rockfish. And about by now, she had had uh, her limit of rockfish. Well, she had, had a cod smile. One, and two, her three, two halibut, the 60-incher, the big of its one of the boat, and the 27 and a half incher just under the limit. Wanted her to hold out for 27 and three quarters, but uh, hey, she did the best she could. So fortunately, she went and sat down for a while and gave the rest of All us right. a chance See to bass. fish. So let's get on with answering some more questions while I reel in a few more fish and we'll wait for me to get my oh, good we one. got tangled. So a big question naturally is, what do I wear? Um, take a look at what uh, the mates got on there. You can find those uh, waterproof overalls just about every store uh, in the area. Um, so either those or make sure you have a, a good uh, rain repellent jacket, uh, some rain repellent pants, uh, as my wife has on there. And notice her gloves. Uh, she's got a nice pair of polypropylene gloves. Uh, they're nice and thick, but they have the uh, rubber palm on them. And uh, she thought that was just perfect. I had straight, thin pair of polypropylene uh, glove inserts and I don't think they were uh, quite as good. Uh, they got me through. Uh, I recommend a hat. Uh, we were very lucky. Uh, this is a calm day. The wind was down and we, we only got some light mist, but where I was uh, positioned, uh, you can see the overhanging roof right there, I was up at the back corner. So any rain or condensation that gathered on that, it dripped down my neck. But between my Columbia rain uh, windbreaker and my hat uh, 
it, it was tolerable. Plus, I could duck behind the cabin whenever we started moving, which kept me out of the wind. So that was pretty good. Um, as for shoes, I wore my uh, waterproof hiking boots. It. Did just fine. My good wife one. had uh, some special waterproof boots that she bought. I would not recommend uh, loose tennis shoes or anything that's going to soak up water. That would just make for a long, miserable day. Well, as you can see there, there. Uh, finally, this is my last minute halibut. Um, I'll put a breakdown of what time it was um, in, in a little pop out uh, there in the corner. The fighter. But this guy ended up being about 45 inches, um, like most fish. Uh, every Thank inch uh, larger, seems exponentially bigger in girth. So he, he was pretty good. Uh, I, I was happy to get him. He was the only uh, keeper halibut I had on the trip, and uh, he was a feisty one. As you can see, the husband there, uh, he got his halibut, another last minute one. Mine is still kicking. The mate is holding it down while the captain is preparing the cooler. And uh, looks like she's deciding to tenderize my fish for me. Not quite sure why. All right, into the box. And that was our last spot, the last uh, five minutes or so. So we headed back. Now we are back at the dock. And now the question comes up, uh, how do you clean them? How do they know whose fish is whose? And then how do I get them home? So this is Miller Landings. What, what a beautiful place. First thing they did was they took the fish from the entire boat, laid them out for the uh, bragging wall shot, and hung them up. And then they have the butchering table. These are, uh, these are some of the fish from our day, and they will fillet them right there on the spot for you. They'll then put them in a plastic bag, and there are two processors downtown Seward, which is about a five minute drive, uh, and we'll show you that in a moment. But let's just watch these guys. What they do with these fish is uh, really something. All right, right there, those are our two big halibut. You can see the cross marks there uh, back on the gill plate. That is how they identified that these were our halibut. So that's how you know, uh, making sure that you're getting your meat, at least from the halibut. This company, um, they, they make sure you get your own halibut meat, but when it comes to the rockfish and the cod, they fillet everything and then divvy it out among the uh, passengers. Um, you know, without keeping track, it's just too hard on the smaller fish to keep track of uh, which party caught what fish. So that's fine with me. We all ended up getting a pretty good bag of uh, cod and rockfish. That's my halibut on the left. That's my wife's big one in the middle. My little action camera kind of makes them look smaller than they really were. But trust me, there is a lot of meat coming off these guys. Another question you might have is after all this work, a 11 hour charter and then another hour cleaning up and filleting, uh, how much do you tip them? Uh, going rate, uh, in my experience, is generally 15 to 20 percent if you think they, uh, they did a pretty good job. In my experience, the deckhand doesn't get paid a whole lot, mostly works off the of tips. Um, so do what you can, support them, especially if you had a good day and uh, you feel like they really put the uh, effort in to help you. We'll talk about cost shortly when we get to the meat processor. Notice here he's cutting out the cheek meat on my, uh, my fish there on the bottom right. We haven't eaten that yet, but I understand it's pretty darn good. And that is a nice chunk of meat. There's the cheek of uh, my wife's fish. Now, I'll, I'll tell you, my, my wife did not stick around to see this part. She's the type of person that when I bring a 10-inch uh, perch home from the Chesapeake, she will cut the fillets off, and then uh, out of the 10 perch I might have kept, she will then get enough meat off the rest of the skeleton to make a half dozen or more fish cakes. So when she sees all the meat that is uh, not being kept off these guys, um, yeah, it, it, she just doesn't want to see it. So she headed back to uh, to our rental. And, uh, got ready for later on. 
Yeah. That lady you saw right there, uh, we talked to her. She's from originally from Hong Kong, married an American, lives in Alaska now, but watch this. Look at that carcass. There is a lot of meat. The collar there alone probably has about four pounds good halibut meat. She's going to take it home. And I am happy to see that. There's a lot of good meat there that is not going to go to waste. I guarantee that uh, my experience that she is probably going to get a lot of good fish stock out of that. And she is going to get probably six, seven pounds of good halibut meat out of that that otherwise would have just gone to waste. All right, wrapping up here. Now we're back in Seward. Um, we used a processing company called JDoc. There's another one. There's two in, in Seward, but I imagine most towns uh, have a processor. So what do you do with the meat once you have it filleted? You take it to a processor. You sign it in, and they will cut it up. Uh, the standard weighting is about one pound packages. They will cut it up, vacuum seal it, freeze it, and then if you want to box it up, there you can. There is the price of frozen halibut right there. $34.95 cheek meat, $26.95. So when we talk about money, um, you know what? They, they, they charge a bit. We ended up paying about 190 bucks for them to cut it up, vacuum seal it, freeze it, and put it in two boxes. We decided to take ours as carry-on, and we'll show that as a moment. Um, it gets pretty expensive shooting these things overnight. So there you have it. What is that? $197 to do everything for us. There is the port of Seward. So if you were to take another charter, this is where JDOC is, and I'm sure they have other charters. That's where their boats are, and this is their fish cleaning stand. Very convenient. It is right outside of the JDOC facility, and you would go straight from there to there. Now the question is, where do you stay? This is where we stayed. This was an offering through um, Miller's Landing. We had that room right there. Very beautiful, a little small, but it had everything we needed. Most important, it had an outside deck, table, barbecue, and this view. In Seward itself, there were several hotels. You can look them up, but um, it looked like they have about one cruise ship a day that goes there, and they have a lot of fishing there. So you have your options, but for me, if you're doing a bucket list trip and you can afford it, go there. What a beautiful day. All right, so we, we this is two days later. So they had it for uh, about two days for us. We're picking it up now. It is well frozen and we're kind of anxious to see Ooh, what it box. looks like. There's box number one. Yep. And here's box number two. Now, our flight um, isn't till Thank you very much. the next day. Thank you so, much. Thank you so what do you do with it? Yes, it's all frozen. You'll see later that they put two ice packs in there. But we went up to the Anchorage Airport, and if you go down to carousel number four in the baggage area, they have cold storage. I think it was $22 a box. They will put it in their freezer and hold it for you. If you have antlers, they'll take them too. That is them. So the next morning, we picked them up, headed up, went straight, and checked them in as baggage, and they got to Baltimore just fine, despite a several hour delay in uh, Dallas because of the weather, too hot. Get it home, I'm anxious to make sure they're okay. Nice packaging, nice styrofoam box, perfectly fitting inside the cardboard box. Little bit of plastic padding there. Let's get that off. And there is the fish. Oh, that's beautiful. And yes, they are still completely frozen. I don't know if we uh, needed to put them in the Anchorage uh, cold storage, but it sure took a load off my mind when we were sitting in thunderstorms on that tarmac for a couple hours because it was hot, humid, and uh, bad weather in Dallas. So we got home, all was good. So now that we're wrapping up, we can take a look at some of our memories. There was a view outside of our cabin. There was a bald eagle eating some of those leftovers you saw being flipped off from the cleaning. What a sight. And here 
is some rockfish on the grill. Boy, that's beautiful. Going to put it on a North Vietnamese dish of uh, noodles, fried onions, lettuce, and peanuts, along with the dipping sauce. And as we're eating that, we're thinking back to our trip and what a great time we had. Definitely well worth it. Hope you get a chance to get up there. If you do, I hope this helped. Thanks for watching, and as always, I am enjoying retirement.